One more example here for you guys. Uh, we are going to do just a little bit with the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to do a little bit of working with triangles to figure missing, or find missing values, and also we're going to look a little bit at the distance formula. First thing here is when we're dealing with a right triangle, we can use something we call the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the value of k. In this case, it would be k. So remember that the Pythagorean theorem looks just like this. It's always a squared plus your b squared equals your c squared. Remember, this only applies with right triangles. If you do not see a right triangle, do not try to use the Pythagorean theorem. It won't work. It'll give you an incorrect answer. So in this case, when we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the one thing to remember is that the c is the only side that matters or that is important that you have to pick out first. When we're looking at our triangle, our c value is always going to be our hypotenuse, or it's going to be the longest side. So looking over here, our c value is going to be 40, because it's our longest side. So we're going to plug in 40 here for our c. Now the cool thing about the Pythagorean theorem, because we're just adding a squared and b squared together, is it doesn't really matter which one we choose to be what. Uh, generally, we'll say that a is the smaller side. So let's use 24 for a, plus our k squared, because that's our variable. We don't know what k squared is. Now. Uh, what we need to do is we're actually going to have to uh, do our multiplication out here. Uh, I'm going to just do it as it is. 40 times 40 is going to be 1,600. 24 times 24 is going to be 16. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8. We have a 96. Bring the 0. 8, 4. Adding those up, we have a 6. A 7 and, one, and 576. So we end up with the formula 576 plus k squared is equal to 16,000. Now, we need to once again solve for this k. That's what we're looking for. The first thing to do is to get rid of this 576. We're going to subtract it. Subtract 576. We're going to end up with k squared equals 1600 minus 576, which will leave us with. 1,020, let's try that again, 1,024. So k squared is going to be equal to 1,024. In order to figure out this answer, what we're going to do is we need to take the square root of each side so that our k is going to be alone. Take the square root of k, the square root of 1,024. The square root of k squared is just k. So these cancel each other out. They go away k is equal to the square root of 1,024. Uh, now, in order to figure out what the square root of 1,024 is, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of multiplication. If you remember approximating square roots, we just kind of have to choose numbers around and figure it out. You could plug it into a calculator. That would work as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, so I look here, and I see that 24 was like, 576, 40 was like 1600, so it's got to be in between those two somewhere. I'm going to just choose something right in the middle. Let's try uh, let's try 30, just for the fun of it, because 30 is an easy one to do. If we do 30 squared, 30 times 30, we're going to end up with 900, which is pretty close, but uh, still a little bit low. So let's try the next number. Let's say that we have 31 squared. 31 times 31, 1, 3, 0, 3, 3 times 3 is 9. Now we have 961. We're still a little bit short. Let's try 32 squared. And I'm going to wager that 32 squared is going to come out exactly here. So we have a 4 times a 6. We down the 0. We have a 6. We have a 9. When we add these up, we'll have 4 down here. 12. Put the 1. 10 to 4. So the square root of 10 to 4 is going to be one of these original numbers. It's 32. K is equal to 32. All right, that's worth the Pythagorean theorem. They won't always work out perfectly, but you can get pretty darn close to getting that whole number there just by doing that. Let's move on to another thing. So if we're talking, if you remember back to the distance formula, I want to look at that with you again. And really what we're doing with the distance formula is not any different than that. We're just trying to, or not any different than the Pythagorean theorem. We're just going to do it on a grid with points. All right, the first way that I want to look at it is by using a graph. This way is a little bit easier for me to picture. All right, so let's say we have this graph, and there's these points. The first one is at negative 6, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
One, two, three, four, five. I know my graph's not terribly well done, but it'll survive. Negative six and five. I've certainly done worse before. And then we have three zero. Three zero is going to be right here. Three zero. And all we are looking for, if you remember with these, is we are looking for the exact distance between this point and this point. We're trying to find that exact distance there. And what's tricky about this is that we can't really just count because it doesn't line straight up. But what we can do is we can use that Pythagorean theorem to actually figure this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a triangle. I'm going to go this way so that I can use this uh, axis. And when I draw myself this right triangle, all you have to do is go straight down from one point and then straight across. I am able to find the exact length of the side to find this distance here. So the length of this side here, right? We went up five here. And this one's on the actual uh, on the x-axis, so we're going to have a value of five here. I could actually count those if I wanted to: one, two, three, four, five. And going this way, we're going to have to count all of these spaces. We went negative six, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine over here. And now, once we have this, we can do our math because we now have a triangle that looks like this. If you want me to redraw it over here. We have this lovely right triangle with a big bird beak uh, that has 9 on the bottom and 5 on the left side. And we're looking for the value of, I don't know, we'll call it D because we're looking for distance. All right, in order to find the value of D, all we have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem. We'll do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 5 squared plus, since D is the hypotenuse in this case, 9 squared equals C squared. 5 squared is 25. 9 squared is 81 plus 25 equals c squared. 81 plus 25 is going to be 106 equals c squared. And what I'm going to, and then because I now have c squared equals 106, I need to approximate this, or I need to solve for c, I guess. First, to solve for c, we'll take the square root of each side. The square root of c squared is going to cross this out, leaving us with just c is equal to the square root of 106. So we took the square root of each side just like this. Now to find the actual value of c, we can approximate the square root of 106. I'm gonna, I know that 10 times 10 is going to give me exactly 100. And I know that 11 times 11 is going to give me 121. So I know that this is going to be closer to 10 than it is to 11. I'm going to try something like, I don't know, let's go with 10.1 or 10.2 might work. Let's go 10.1. If we do 10.1 times 10.1, we get 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And we're going to end up with 102.01, which is still a little bit south. It's probably going to be close to about 10.2. So what I'm going to put is, is approximately equal to 10.2. That's about as close as I can get without using a calculator. All right, hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Uh, keep on working hard, guys.